Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the end of Fahrenheit 451 for just a second. Um, there is an interesting question at the end because it's kind of, it, it seems to end on a real, a real downer. Um, the, the, the city that Montag just left got blown up, um, and it, it just doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of hope there. So in a seemingly fatalistic novel, is there hope? Is there hope? And the answer I think is yes. And so I'm going to talk about a few different ways that I see some hope in the novel. Um, so let's start with the fact that there are still people like Montag and the hobos to pass information on to. So that means that there's a possibility for change and for society be, to be different. So that's good news, right? There are still people out there within this society um, that that are willing to pass along information and live a dangerous life for the sake of change. Um, on page 153, Granger um, talks about how he will pass, or the, the goal of what they're doing, is to pass the books on to their children. Um, he recognizes this, but you can't pe make people listen. They have to come around in their own time wondering what happened and why the world blew up under them. Okay, um, so he acknowledges that, hey, this isn't going to be an easy or short process, um, but the fact that these people exist and that they have hope um, kind of reflects hope within the novel as well. Okay, so also someone else that we need to think about um, is Faber. So what happened to Faber? Well, we, we can assume that he got out of town. Um, and if you, if you remember, what in particular, what very important item did he still have in his possession? The Bible right? So what are the possibilities? The Bible is a very powerful book, okay? Um, whether, you know, people are religious or not is a very powerful book. And so the fact that he has that in his possession, um, I, I think displays hope, immense hope, right? The Bible itself is a form of hope. And so the fact that it, it's still within his possession is, is really significant and important. Then there's just this idea multiple times within the ending that mankind just doesn't give up. Okay, um, so there is a possibility for change. The hobos are marching on as their book slash author um, um, to pass on to future generations. Okay, so again, the fact that the hobos exist is hope, right? Um, it demonstrates that mankind is just unwilling um, to, you know, accept a, an awful fate, a bad fate. Um, there's an interesting simile there. Um, mankind is like, and you can see it in the picture, a phoenix, okay? And so they, they talk about this at the end of the novel, Granger does. Um, and, and the thing about a phoenix is when it burns, okay, when it, when it is done, um, it ends up being reborn. Okay, it kind of comes back to life. On page 156, Granger says, it looks like we're doing the same thing over and over, but we have one thing that the Phoenix never had. We know the silly things we just did, all the silly things we've done for a thousand years. And as long as we know that and always have it around where we can see it, someday we'll stop making the funeral pyres and jumping in the middle of them. Um, and so he compares mankind to, to this phoenix who just continually burns itself. And so, of course, there's lots of imagery there with the burning within this novel. Um, but, but he says, look, at some point, we're going to stop burning ourselves. We're going to stop doing that because we're, we're going to kind of collect enough information, collect enough history, um, collect enough um, knowledge in order to prevent ourselves from doing those silly things. Um, and so it's kind of an interesting little, little simile there. Um, there were some biblical references we've got to talk about that also reflect hope. Uh, the first one is in Ecclesiastes. Bradbury leaves us with Montag in particular. He was reciting Ecclesiastes. Um, there was a part, a, a time to break down and a time to build. And I think that also reflects hope. Um, that yeah, there's, there's good, there are bad times in life, um, but there also are times to build and rebuild. Uh, and so it, it gives us this sense of, hey, Look, this isn't going to last forever necessarily. There's also some quotes from Revelations, or Revelation, excuse me. Uh, the novel ends by saying that there uh, was a tree of life which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Okay, and again, that is somewhat of a metaphor as well for uh, these hobos. These are the leaves of the tree, and they are for the healing of the nations. And so, again, there is hope there that, um, that progress can be made.
Um, this last part isn't necessarily a, a manner of hope, but I just find it to be ex extremely beautiful. On page 149, Granger talks about um, why he why he mourned for his grandfather, and that actually starkly contrasts um, with how Montag doesn't feel a necessity to cry over Mildred's death. Remember, Mildred was was likely back in the city um, when when it blew up. And so Montag can't cry over Mildred, but, but Granger cries for his grandfather, and he explains why. Um, he wasn't actually crying for his grandfather, but for the legacy that his grandfather left, okay? What did Mildred do? What legacy did she leave for Montag? Nothing. There's nothing to mourn for her because she left no sort of impact. Um, on page 149, again, um, Granger says, everyone must leave something behind when he dies, my grandfather said. A child or a book or a painting or a house or a pair of shoes made or a garden planted. He says, it doesn't matter what you do, as long, so long as you change something from the way it was before, you touch it into something that's like you after you take your hands away. The lawn cutter might just, well, just as well not have been there at all. The gardener will be there a lifetime because, again, it's the legacy. What are you doing to make a positive impact? And so in some ways, I think this idea of legacy is also suggesting hope in the novel as well, that there are enough people... This, within this hobo group that are, are trying to leave a legacy, that are trying to leave the world a better place. Um, and I think there's something really, really beautiful and noble in that. Okay, so now you're going to want to transition to um, your Fahrenheit 451 characters chart. Um, this is something you will want to open up because you're going to fill it out for Granger. So um, if you get that chart out, please, I don't know if you want to do split screen or something like that, but just make sure that you fill this out here. Um, down at the bottom, we've already filled in just about everybody else, um, but Granger. Okay, so remember the first part is a description of him. The second one is his influence on Montag. So Granger, um, he's the one that greets Montag and welcomes him into the group of book memorizers. Okay, so that was kind of cool. Uh, he actually wrote a few books of his own. And the big thing with him is that he, along with his uh, other hobo friends, um, memorizes books and plans to pass them on via oral, oral tradition with the hope that their efforts will slowly change the world around them. Okay, um, so that's kind of who he is. Um, as far as what impact he has on Montag, he has a pretty significant impact on him. Um, he gives Montag directions and purpose. Um, Montag has been kind of searching for what do I do next? Um, and, you know, for so long it was kind of this tense situation, especially in the first two parts. And even part three as he's trying to escape from his society. It was very, very tense. And so he didn't really have time to think about and process what do I do next? Well, Granger gives him that opportunity to really process process things um, and think about, okay, what, what is my actual plan? Like, what is my plan of action? I can't do nothing, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh, he also helps Montag calm his rage um, and comforts him after the bombing. Um, I can't even imagine, I mean, well, you can't probably even imagine just watching the city that you, the, the only city that you knew, completely destroyed. Um, knowing that his wife was there, it's, that's that's hard. And so um, Granger was able to comfort him after the bombing. Um, and then finally gives him hope for a future, like we just talked about, um, how there is hope in this novel. It is, um, you know, it doesn't, it's not quite so obvious, but you, if you're looking in the right places, you can find it. And so Granger really helps Montag find that hope. 